Hello, welcome to the botnet, the good botnet, the only non-evil botnet in the world. Current load status is 0 0.25. I get the live load of the server in this little program. The server sits uh, 3 meters from here. By the way, my old notebook is doing a very good job as the bot server. The bot server is... oops. The bot is online, I hope. This is the bot's own chat where I train it. Yes, it's online. That's very good. And what I want to show you is uh, a new language. Uh, it's a mixture of Java and English. <laughs> there's assembler, there's basic, there's Java, there's Java X, and then now there's uh, a language on top that's even closer to English than stuff like Java is. And you can now query the bot by URL. If you have any question for the information database, uh, you can just make a URL like this. Although X is a variable and you, you're, it's a bit complicated. You can also just ask something in the chat. It's easier. Here's the new language. It's uh, just made of a lot of rules for now. If this and that, then this. And any part of this here can be in Java or it can be in English. This is the innovation here. When I say Java, I mean Java X because Java X is Java without the overhead. So what is this? This is guessing a language. Somebody types something, somebody says fast is the site, and the bot is supposed to guess the language first because all further processing probably depends on, yeah, it stored something but it was not very accurate. That's what we're in changing. So somebody types something, here's background information. This is stored somewhere uh, in the information database that we have of all the things that are true. So a line beginning with these two words is probably in German. That's a fact that's just, it's already stored in our information database. The second condition is uh, actual Java code, Java X code. There's some input, what the person typed. And this means, what does it mean? What is this here short for? The bot should know this. Yeah, it's short for starts with ignoring case. So if the input starts with this, ignoring if it's written in capital letters or not, then this condition meets. And if both these conditions meet, then we store something. This is again English. It's just an English sentence. Guess language is German. And this hash sign, I just use it for temporary values. Temporary variable here in this. You don't have to use it, but it's kind of useful, I think. This is a statement that always holds, like a timeless fact, and it has no hashtags. And this one has a hashtag, you know. It's, we'll handle this flexibly, it's not a problem. So we have background knowledge check, we have an actual code execution here on the current input, and we have the result, which is another piece of information. I actually implemented this in a program, a little bit of code around it. It tries all the combinations of the conditions and checks if the rule uh, fires or not. And this should run through. Okay, yeah. We tried all the eight combinations of each con condition holding or not holding. So, and this is all quite elegant. Yeah, there's a thought space. For every calculation you make, you open a thought space and say, this is my thought bubble that I do stuff in that has all the temporary information. New thought space. A lot of machinery behind it, but very simple usage. And as I said, we don't want to program much anymore. We just have these rudimentary programs and the actual hot stuff is now happening in these rules. So we can run this rule. How do we extend this? 
that would be the next question and it's um, we just look at this rule and generalize some parts for example this could be different right you know we could teach some other language and we say voulez-vous <laughs> if a line beginning with voulez-vous hey, let's do this it's good voulez-vous another line uh, here he says it's just for coding down there. Is that correct? Okay, I see. Good. Is in French. And here, the same thing. So, and we can actually just store this in the bot. Is let's give it a name. Is the go here and teach okay, the input field is a little small but this should work there it is and we can actually query it from the web too there so, and we could execute this rule too, but yeah, we need more infrastructure. Um, so we could read this was the previous rule. So uh, we just we can automate this the generalization process. We say this is the same as this. We relate these two things here and say what kind of thing they are. In this case, just any string with quotes. And this can be another variable which is linked to this here. These two would have to be changed together obviously so there's a one-to-one -one relation here and the type of object is the language we can be funny very general here you could also write like is in german or austrian or something you can have complex stuff here it just has to match we are very flexible we generally just accept english and if it's not in the format the bot wants it to be exactly if the bot converts it just follow your tongue <laughs> write what you want these are probably all the ch things we want to change. I don't see anything else here. This is one variable, and this is the other one. So we make these rules, which are pretty understandable. And we think about the rules. And the bot automatically can uh, generalize rules. Here's another thing I made, which is very really funny. Uh, which shows the auto generaliza generalization of concepts. Uh, you just write some sentence here. Yeah. It's not a protected command. You can just type this in the chat. Too. John's dog is a cat. Please don't let me down. Oh, this is funny. Oh, this almost worked. Something is, yeah, you know, it, it turns, to, it, it makes variations here. John went to Paul, it's good. Dog, leopard. But here's something weird. I think it uses some very general category. For example, here, cat and suitcase. It's both a noun, both are things. So it has to use the category noun instead of something more specific like uh, animal. You use the animal category. It's, I'm slightly confused. This used to work. I need more automatic test cases or something. Should you react? I don't know. This is some random item from the database. So this like half worked, I think. Uh, Anna's fish. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. You know. Oh, what is the rest of this? this is, this is a complex software and I write it like, you know, it's a little bit, little bit built with a hot needle. Uh, <coughs> sometimes stuff fails, but I make a lot of progress. I really want to get this thing working and, uh, and if it's a little duct tape type of construction thing, it doesn't matter. Peter's fish, this is very nice. I stick to the simple stuff here. Maybe we have the adjective as a category. Yeah, that looks good. Sad and arch, 
Stephen's arm hamster. <sighs> what I need to build into this is uh, automatic voice stuff. I just want to click a button and hear the computer say stuff. I mean, we almost have it, but uh, I have to start it here, and this should be more automatic. Full AI experience with sound. Here's my speaking bot, and I can paste them. I mean, at least that's what I can do. I have to think about about it first. Stephen Zahn Hamster. Thank you, William. It's a great voice too. Anyway, Stephen's arm hamster. That was so good, let's try it again. Or, or we go here, it doesn't matter. Very this. Yeah, hamster and pattern. I mean uh, let's look at the database here. What is hamster stored as? If you say word, it appears here. It's a subclass of animal. This is a, the right thing, actually. Animal is a category. And there's some place that says, what is this sharper category? Somewhere it says that uh, animal is a better category than noun. So we see variations of animals and not this random stuff. But I really do like Stephen's armed hamster. That's a good result for today. I'll try to integrate more voice stuff. Uh, we could also have continuous voice recognition. I have a module for this. And just recognize in the background. As I said, the full AI experience, voice recognition, voice output, everything. We uh, have to find the right version here. I kind of have something. Now I'm curious. Java compile, kaboom. Yeah, it might try to execute commands. If I say a command, it knows it, <laughs> it does something. Let's check it out. It uses Chrome for the speech recognition. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Boom. This is a test. This is a test. Yeah. I want to mute it though. I want a beautiful. Yeah, you want a beautiful. <laughs> uh, maybe we can fix this really quickly. Maybe we can fix this pretty quickly. It works. Marxist. I'm looking for the variable. I'm uh, looking for the variable. What bots are you sending to? What bots are you sending to? No. What ah. bots are you sending to? Okay, this is this is funny. Yeah, it should accept this command, and then I can change what it does when I say something. Because I'm I just wanted to record and put it in a text file. But for some reason, it's uh, thinking I want to say this. I guess you know this. <laughs> we are on the pre-consciousness uh, level. But we will reach consciousness level soon, really soon. And when this program has consciousness level, but consciousness level, it uh, will understand the complications. It will understand the reason for bugs. 
Because here's a bug, because this program has two modes. It listens to something I say, and it accepts the commands. And it's not really taking the commands right now. Something is wrongly wired. So, and actually, I, with consciousness, <laughs> it's not a problem, we do it. We will understand this. I will try to fix this program. I will fix this program. And then we can, can, can continue the broadcast. I was almost going to say breakfast, but I mean broadcast. <laughs>